guys, it's Kyle down here in Lunacycle. Today we're making a very exciting video. It's how to install the V2 Ludicrous controller for the M600. Uh, now in the past, the only way you could have gotten this controller is to buy a complete new bike from us. But now we're actually offering it to where you can install it if you have an older X1 or an X2 and you didn't choose this option, you'll now be able to install this at home. Uh, you do need a few special tools before you get started. Uh, you'll need a handful of hex keys, but you will need the Luna lock ring tool. Uh, we'll go ahead and put a link in the description for where to get that. Do not proceed if you do not have that tool. That tool is absolutely essential. You do need to remove the spider and the chain ring. And there's a special tool you need to remove it. So if you don't have that tool or you can't get it, you may just want to remove the motor and send it to us and we can do the install for you. Um, there is one thing to note. The V2 controller is bigger than the stock controller. There's 2,500 watts of power in this. There's much less in this. So this one requires a bigger heat sink, which is very tight and it can barely fit on the X1 frames. So for X1 customers, I do recommend you fully remove your drive, install the controller, then reinstall the drive. Uh, the carbon comes very close on the X1 and also the bash guard. So you're, you're likely going to want to remove the drive if you have an X1. So we're going to go ahead and get started on taking the old controller off of this bike. Um, I'm going to start by removing the crank arm. For that, you'll need a four millimeter hex. You're going to want to loosen the two pinch bolts here. And you want to remove the main cap. That's a six. Now we need that special lock ring tool. The lock ring tool or the lock ring itself is reverse threaded. So you're going to want to spin it clockwise to loosen it. So you go ahead and take the socket tool, attach it to either a breaker bar or a ratchet like this. And what I found is the easiest is to hold the rear wheel with the chain still on the chain ring and turn this clockwise so you will be able to get it loose by just spinning the rear wheel backwards like that and then you can go ahead and just pull the whole spider and chain ring off um, you're also going to want to remove the bash guard the bigger controller may make contact with the bash guard here so you got some little three millimeter bolts on the front and some tiny four millimeter bolts on the back. And the stock controller comes off with a T10 or a Torx 10. You're gonna to wanna to just remove all four of these. Now you can see you have a big phase wire connector. That's your biggest connector, your main discharge connector. And then you got three tiny, three tiny connectors down here. It doesn't really matter which order you unplug them in, but there is a little clip on each one. Just go ahead and get all three of these unplugged. Now you'll see there is a cardboard gasket on here. Sometimes that can stick to the old motor. So you want to be sure you fully remove this old gasket. Your new controller is going to come with a gasket that's pre-glued to the controller. You don't ever want to stack those gaskets. The controller won't work right and it also won't be waterproof anymore. So because this is kind of hard to film 
the wire arrangement, we're going to go ahead and cut to me installing that controller on a table just so you can see the proper way to cross these wires to make it so you can easily install the new V2 controller. All right, so here we have it, the Luna V2 Ludicrous controller. All the connectors are going to have dielectric grease in them. You're going to have a gasket pre-installed. Be sure your old gasket is fully removed. We're including four mounting bolts. They have a socket style head, so it's much easier to install them. Uh, there are two identical connectors. You have your temp sensor, which has black wires. So we went ahead and blacked out that connector because it will let you plug these in wrong. You have your torque sensor plug, which is going to go into this one here. Your temp sensor, which is going to go into this one. You have your big main comm connector, which is going to go into this big long one here. You have your three phase wires, which are keyed, so it won't let you plug it in backwards. You also have your main discharge wire, which is an XT60, and it won't let you plug that in backwards either. So, as you can see, there's capacitors and resistors everywhere on this board. This board is very tight, and it, it, it is very delicate, so you do not want to force this at all. Take your time. Take as long as it takes to install this. If you feel like you're going to break the board or or crush any of the wires or anything just take a minute start over go do something else for a little bit and then come back to it uh, the boards are not cheap so just be careful you really don't want to break these boards now there is a certain order you want to plug these in and it's we found it's the best way to install these without damaging anything the first one you're going to want to plug in is the big com port and there's a clip on the top i'm trying to film this to where you guys can see everything, but it is a little tight, so my hands may get in the way, but just put up with me with that. So, after you get the main connector plugged in, you're going to want to do the temp sensor. The temp sensor is that blacked out one down on the bottom right. And then you want the torque sensor to go on the outside of the black temp sensor. Otherwise, this black temp sensor wire can kind of get in the way and it could get pinched when you try to fully install this. So the third little connector is the torque sensor. You got that connected. And you can see it's it's on the underside of the torque sensor there. Let's see. The next connection you're going to want to make is the main phase wire. So you'll see this will only let you plug it in one direction. You're going to want to rotate this clockwise plug it in like so and finally you're going to want to plug in the main discharge wire the XT60 goes on the bottom it goes underneath all of these other connectors now you want to take your time and rearrange all your connectors so that they sit in this cavity right here this is the, the main spot where you want these connectors to end up you don't want to get them pinched in between this area right here this has the encoder under it and you don't want any wires in that area so like I said you got to be patient this will take as long as it takes um, I do have a pen here it kind of helps with rearranging these connectors it can kind of be helpful if you get one in the wrong spot so start by just pushing these down as best you can and then when you start to get close you want to start with getting this corner seated first, then the rest of this bottom side, and then you're going to want to push down. So I'm going to just spend a few minutes here getting all these wires organized. So once I get pretty close, I'm going to start with this corner right here. Get this corner fully flat. Then get the rest of the bottom. I'm calling this the bottom right here. And you want to go ahead and check that none of your wires are sticking out. And then you should be able to just push this fully flat. Now you'll be able to feel when it's fully flat. <laughs> if you push on this and it wiggles and gives, it means one of your wires is pinched. You're going to want to pull it off and start over again. Now for the bolt tightening sequence, there is a special procedure that we like to do. We like to start with this one right here the bottom left. So go ahead and get this one started and you don't want to get this one all the way tight yet. Just 
just get it down to where it's snug. Whoa. Dropping my tools. Just leave it a little bit loose. Just get it to where it's most of the way threaded in. Next, you're going to want to do the top right. And again, just get it in to where it's most of the way down, but it certainly doesn't need to get tightened yet. I like to go ahead and do either one of these next. Now that I've got them all snug, I'm going to go through in this pattern. I'm going to tighten this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. And I'm going to do that two times. And there's a very low torque spec on these tiny bolts. It's actually like 15 inch pounds or 19 inch pounds, which is much smaller than any, any normal torque wrench would do. But you'll get these tight and you'll feel them just come to a stop. And once they come to a stop, you'll know the controller is fully seated. I'm just tightening each one of these a little eighth of a turn at a time. And I can feel they're all coming to a complete stop. You can see the controller is fully seated and ready to install. So your next step would be if you fully remove the drive is to reinstall the drive and then you would want to go ahead and use your VESC app to go ahead and calibrate this to the motor. All right, so now that you've got your V2 Ludicrous controller installed, you're going to want to go ahead and reinstall the chainring and spider. Now remember the lock ring is reverse threaded, so counterclockwise is going to tighten it. Now the way you get this one tight is you're going to want to just hold the left crank arm with your hand. And go ahead and tighten this down pretty tight. Lastly, you're going to reinstall your crank arm. This outer cap does not need to be tight. This torque spec is 0.75 Newton meters, so not tight at all. These two you want to get tight. Get these to about six. All right. Now, if you did everything properly, you're going to go ahead and turn the bike on. And if you did everything properly, you're going to get error eight up on the screen. So it looks like we did this one correct. Next, you're going to want to have the app downloaded on your smartphone. You can get the app through our website. We'll put a link in the description. We also have a link for how to update the firmware. We made a nice video for that. But today I'm just going to show you how to quickly calibrate it and get rid of that error eight. So you're going to open the Luna Vest app. It's going to take a second. It's finding the bike. You're going to hit connect. If this is your only bike, you can hit yes. Uh, we've already got the most modern firmware on this one so it's going to say calibration required and what that's going to do is that's going to pair the controller to the motor the two need to be paired in order for it to work properly so it's going to go ahead and highlight this button in pink you're going to go ahead and hit offset correction and then ok and what's going to happen is this is going to slowly rotate and it's going to calibrate it to the motor so if you have the bike on the ground you're going to want to lift the rear wheel up off the ground because this is slowly turning to find the correct position. So it's going to take 15, 20 seconds. And then all of a sudden, this will pop up with a number and a degree. Just let it, let it finish. So there we go. 274.6. Now don't forget, you then have to hit right. And down here, it'll say right OK. 
So it looks like everything is good. In order to get rid of the error 8, you do have to turn the bike off and then back on. If we can go ahead and try out the bike, we can reconnect with the app. And then you have your nice dashboard, which will pop up here in one second. And there you go. So now you get to enjoy cool Bluetooth connectivity, lots and lots of customizable power, and a very, very, very upgraded controller on your M600 bike.